morning, beautifuls and beloveds. I hope this finds you well on this date, which is the 27th of February already. So we have quite a bit to share with you today and it'll take as long as it takes. We are naming this All Good Things with a little hint of sarcasm. There's a saying that's called All Good Things Must Come to an End. You know that saying, right? Mm -hmm. And we are not talking about good things coming to an end, but how about all evil things must come to an end? I mean, why not, right? <sighs> yes. So I'm going to read this to you. And then we'll do a nice little cross dissolve and continue on with part one of all good things. I... Noel Rose Anderson, I think can. I inadvertently uncovered truth that was very deep and harmed many, including me. If all good, if all that is good must come to an end, and surely all that is evil and bad must end as well. I found Ending good, while it can be painful, is easier than ending evil. For all evil will fight to the end, even if it means being responsible for its own demise. I learn daily how vast this is, this meaning, what I've been enduring for many, many, many years. Knowing with each discovery to my past uncovers the world's truth. When I began sharing about my red ribbons, it truly was in hopes to set a heart free. What first was meant for one heart is now meant for many, and I would find it'd be responsible for setting me free too. Completely, totally free. What I intended for one would eventually be for me. I just never knew how deep, how far, how wide the journey would be. I lost much, but the risk was worth it. Me, little red-headed me, a dance warrior, a silent rose, a lover of all that is good. I battled on steadfast. The world will soon know my full story and how, in trying to help save one heart, coupled with the help from my friends, thank you friends, I, we, would save many on more levels than just one. And I thank those who helped me. Okay, beautifuls and beloveds, we're back. So that was just a little intro to uh, all good things, dot, dot, dot. But like I was reading, please excuse me, I have a hard time struggling. I'm still adjusting to, you know, figuring out how to read with my really crappy eyesight and just like I said why does it always have to be referred to as all good things must come to an end I understand the saying I understand the different angles you can play in understanding it do you get that saying yes, yes. and there could be a little sarcasm in it especially when I say it <laughs> so I, I want to look at this as um, all evil things must come to an end because why not so, before all those bad and evil things come to an end, more pieces, more pieces, more pieces to the puzzle are emerging. And uh, I'm going to go through a little list and I'm going to explain all these different things. You were witness to a lot of this, so your input is just as important. So as I was going through my little journey, of wanting to help one person. Yeah, no joke. It was really um, a thank you gift. And I was very much impressed, not only with this person, uh, love them on a friend, sister level, nothing weird. Um, I just saw things, behavioral things, and I thought, oh dear. You can recognize most often, you can be wrong too, and I'll stand completely corrected if I'm wrong, 
but uh, you can most often detect things in other people that you are struggling with or you have struggled with. And one of those things was being abused sexually. And now that my life has traveled quite a few years after the fact, uh, I've been abused on many levels at this point. It's getting ridiculous and I'm like, okay, all evil things must come to an end. And so they are ending and I'm very happy about this. I wear yellow purposely, not, not just because of the cool meanings behind it, innocence, happiness. Pink is also, you know, youthful and happiness too. Uh, yellow is also a sign of friendship. Yellow is also in welcoming the heroes home at the end of a war and as you know if you looked at my other videos I believe we're in World War III and I believe that World War III is a corporate war not being fought with sticks and stones meaning people foresaw supposedly that there would be a nuclear type thing and it would cause us to not have any kind of technology and fight with sticks and stones that didn't happen um, and this is not a physical type skirmish war, but there's been some things here and there peppered throughout. This has probably been the longest war, and it was a very silent cold war at the same time. And why do I say that? Would you like to elaborate on that? Um, yeah, because the, the way things are set up is that, because everything's all hint drops and manipulation, there's always supposedly an element of possibly not, whatever that is. And because of that, everyone can always backpedal and say, oh, that's not true, or saying something like that, which puts everyone in a position of a cold war because they need absolutely, they usually need some form of evidence, which we have, but a lot of these people before us were not able to get it. Yeah, it took somebody, I don't want to go around bragging thinking I'm like so special or something like that. I'm just an ordinary person who found themselves in a very extraordinary circumstance that lasted a few decades. And it goes way back, people. It's focused around my grandfather most likely and things that he did. He existed before I was ever thought in my parents' minds. And unfortunately, his sins and evil doings just kept perpetuating and making the snowball get bigger and bigger and bigger. And so you were telling me why you thought it had to be me. Um, yes, for one, you're not at the level of super ultimate stardom. So it would be very strange for these people to suddenly say and bash you in the media and stuff like that. It protects me in a sense. Yeah, so they can't do a usual assault like how they usually do. Plus you're mentally more, what's, what's the word? Stronger? And because of that you can handle this stuff better than a lot of other people can. Go and figure that. Yeah. And you have the multi talents that these bad guys like to pursue. So they would do so they do bad things to you and as a result you get evidence of them doing it to you. Because that's the only way you can get evidence really. And there's other things too. <laughs> Not just that. Um Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, like Jesus had to be, please, this is a very bad analogy, I'm nowhere near this level, but I'm just trying to help you guys understand it, and I'm still trying to understand it too, because I'm like, why me? And I'm so angry, so angry at him, because I didn't sign up for this. Um, but I love the Lord Jesus. I'm not angry at you, I'm just pointing yeah. at you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I am, I mean, who the hell wants to go through something like this? And. Like the Lord Jesus, he had to be the propitiation, a sacrifice. Hey, I'm nobody's sacrifice, but I'm going to be talking about how he could rise up and save because he was the original, the authentic, the genuine article that, I mean, he was perfect. I'm far from perfect, but I guess God just chose me to, to do this because in a sense, I would be the perfect 
candidate to do this. And I'm thinking, why did he even think this? But whatever. Um, yeah, well, so we figured out all these things. He's really ingenious and smart. So, uh, you know, it's, it's been interesting. I wanted him to have a good future. That was my motivation, too. I want all of you people and your children and descendants to have a good future, too. And I decided with my family and my company members, board members, that we were willing to take the risk because at this rate, if nobody stands up and does something, we're all doomed. It's, it's that bad. Because if it's going to be successful with me, it's going to be successful with everybody. And this is, this is a very, how can I say it? It's a lulling, very soft lulling into a deep communistic society. Because obviously, this would not work if someone said, hey, let's just put that up there on the ballot and make this happen. If you noticed, things are very, uh, sin can be very sensual and sinuous and snake-like and just kind of weave itself in there. And this is exactly what it's done with the aid of gatekeepers who blinded their eyes and put out their hands and say, yes, for a price, I will let you in. And it has destroyed the very fabric of our society, one layer, one item, one person, one heart at a time. So, how do we fit into all of this? Well, yeah, yeah, that, that's the interesting things, thing, things, it could be plural, folks, and we are still traveling down this little rabbit hole here and discovering more and more and more and more, and I'm like, oh my god, really? Really? And yes, really, and yes, seriously. So, without further ado, you watch the other videos and you'll get the gist of all of that. But I'm going to be talking about another aspect of this because it's pretty, pretty heady, pretty big. It takes all of these videos, all of these hundreds of hours to explain it. Again, I just did a video in under five minutes. I gave a good pitch, you know, when you pitch a story because you want to write the screenplay and have it produced. Okay, well, I did a pretty good job doing that, but there's more finite details to it. So one of the most important areas of interest is the symbolism with this whole big cockamamie BS evil disgusting thing. And I inadvertently, all things about me, which are factual, proven, substantiated truth, um, pointed clues in my life and inadvertently pointed to these others in this big massive thing. And it, uh, it uncovers much and um, we couldn't stay silent anymore because uh, we had a lot of very bad, very, uh, well, look at our social media timelines and you can figure out what bad means. It's not just having a bad hair day or not being able to find something that you lost in your home, no matter how important it is. We're talking catastrophic. We're talking to the point where I, we have absolutely no privacy and we never signed up for this. And it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty heady. So I'm gonna go through the list here. Can you help me? Yes. I, I'll read this part because I'm very familiar with it. If you wanna elaborate very carefully without naming specific names or groups. Oh, how it's connected? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So everybody at this point knows about my red ribbons. For me, it let me just clarify this. It symbolizes victory over many things. Sexual child abuse, abuse, uh, sexually abused as a teenager, you know, I was raped by a cop. How horrible is that? Um, etc. and suffering other forms of abuse, but basically it's a symbol of victory. And what I'm currently going through, another element, and it's all connected, 
uh, is this modern day slavery. It's a modern day slavery type form of, think of Scheherazade, really. I'm not trying to be flippant or cute here, but that's probably the best way to look at it. And she, as far as what I understand, I've read many versions of this, but she kept telling the king, her captor, a story. Every single night she would leave a little bit of a cliffhanger so she would stay alive, essentially. And so I am not exaggerating. I am being very honest and truthful about this because many times, and you unfortunately, and you know, another board member and, uh, you know, family members have unfortunately have, and friends too, have seen what we have endured. And there is no exaggeration, would you say? Yeah, it's accurate. And um, so just like Scheherazade, I was seeing a pattern. It's like, I really can see my having to s tell these stories to stay alive. Because if I don't, certain bad things would happen to me. And at first I thought, wait, what, what's going on? You don't connect the two. See, that's the problem with hint drops. You can get it really right or you can get it really wrong. And so I'm not really good at this hint dropping thing. So all of you, my enemies, I was never hint dropping at your thing. Like I said, totally innocent and inadvertent. I was just telling my truth, not knowing that there was more to my truth than I saw at face value. But we know now. <laughs> so um, my red ribbons are also going to be and are a symbol of my overcoming this modern day slavery. And we call it modern day slavery for these reasons, because it is modern day devices and tactics that are being used. I have been enslaved against my will. My privacy has been stripped from me. Portions of my identity, which I think we've solidified now. I mean, we, these people wouldn't even like let me do my trademark properly. We had them. Not physically, but right? We had to hammer these people. It, it, was, it was a nightmare and it's not over yet. And thank you to all those great people in our government. And yes, God, you know what? I understand that there are, there are bad people, evil people, and conflicted people, confused people, good people in everything. Please do not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Not everybody in our government is corrupted. Please, really. I know this because we're being helped. Um, so I thank you. Names will come later, not now. Um, but so my red ribbons, I had no idea but my red ribbons were gonna symbolize my freedom in a bigger way. Not just freedom from the memory of sexual abuse, but, you know, because of all of this, all this horrible crap, I've actually forgiven my grandfather. I mean, like, for real. Which is a huge step for me. Because I was like, wait a minute, I don't wanna end up like any of these other people with bitterness in their heart and so wanting to wield something over another innocent person to exact justice because they didn't get justice because the person that did this got away with it. Maybe they passed on and I'm like, you know what? I'm not getting caught up in that cockamamie, never ending abuse cycle. I need to end it with, with the salve of forgiveness. So my red ribbons are so triumphant and I know they were a symbol of evil. But I said, screw this, I'm done. And so my red ribbons, my little dance, I was just trying to do a nice little story in four minutes and one second and say, hey, just in case, just in case what I'm perceiving is right, this is just a thank you gift, but maybe it's a deeper gift to say, hey, look, you know, I went through the same thing too and uh, you never have to talk about it with me, but just know that you have a fellow sister in suffering and I get it and it made me humanize that person even more and love them more in a respectful way. I mean, I could be wrong. I will stand completely corrected, but that's, you know, another reason why I don't want to say names. And it's just, it wouldn't be fair because, you know, maybe they don't want people to know if I hit it right on the head. Um, but that doesn't matter. 
it matters to them. I did my job with that, but that's where it came from. My just wanting to communicate without, you know, sitting him down and having a little chat because I, I was on the other end of that once and it's like, wow, that's really intense and embarrassing. You get mad, you get upset. You know, I didn't need that. That person didn't need that. So, uh, and I could have been wrong. <laughs> I don't think I am, but I could have been. And I just wanted to just say, hey, I, I understand you. I love you on a sisterly friend level and uh, you know that, that was all I intended folks and it just became a big massive movement that these others who were my enemies mortally so uh, not because I chose that but they just declared that themselves have been suppressing me like tooth and nail and digging in but there's more. So why don't you go ahead and say what it means for these and others. So for them, it's probably some form of a label or symbol probably pertaining to sexual child abuse and human trafficking. More specifically, it could mean like saying that the said person is available or that they know or something. There's, they seem to use it for several things around that marked tagged for something or maybe that was you know the action was done to them or it's a claiming of something it might be a they kind of hijacked it from bible references yeah because in the bible it's uh there's a lot of references of red and it's supposed to symbolize salvation most of the time because Jesus gave his very life. I mean, wow. How many of you, I know I don't, I wouldn't do it, could give your lives to save the entire world? Like I said, I ain't no sacrificial lamb, anything. My trying to help save the world is gonna be victorious. I ain't going down. The people who are helping me are gonna make darn sure that if anything happens to me, they're gonna pay a million times dearer of a price. So, it's in everybody's best interest that y'all keep me happy and alive and doing well and letting me do what I want to do with my life. Uh, but yeah, that's, we're pretty sure of it. And we've seen, with all of these things we're listing, um, we've seen what we think is an SOS cry for help. We'll get to that later, but um, I guess we can go on. Right. So that's one element, and I had no idea that this actually meant something behind the scenes to other, the others, and it's pretty wicked. Um, my being sexually abused and my mother being sexually abused, that was just a big flag right there alone, because for some reason if somebody says that, especially if you were a child, uh, it draws attention to you because the others... Look at that. Do you, you want to say what that is? Uh, yeah, I'm assuming, I'm, I'm just going to guess what you're trying to say with this one, is that they target people that do this stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's a marking of their target. It's saying, oh, they're somebody else's something. Very close to that. Um, we can't really hit the nail on the head with some of this stuff, so there's a little vagueness for a reason, but this is the time that we can just illuminate some things. Okay, now let's go to our company, Ruban Rouge, Ruban Rouge Dance, Red Ribbons, our company. Colors are red, white, and black. Now, when I was starting this company, um, those were the colors that were for my dance, primarily red and white, but I developed it further and I wasn't like looking at other people's symbols or signs, but red, white, and black uh, symbolizes the the salvation, you know, redemption, whatever, you, you don't have to go religious with this, uh, victory, I use red as victory, uh, white, purity. Uh, overcoming shining light in the black which is darkness it has a lot to do with theater which I am a theatrical person and the company is a theatrical company film stage you name it TV and then what we didn't know and we have found out yeah well 
they apparently use the colors for them and all of their affiliates. It's like a, a country flag almost. There's usually like three colors and each color has a symbolic meaning to it. Yeah. So again, I didn't realize I was stepping on people's toes because they don't go around promoting it, number one. It's a very, but it's subtly there. And, um, you know, now I'm not saying everybody, obviously, I know a lot of people that use red, white, and black. I know a lot of companies that use red, white, and black, and they're not doing this kind of stuff. We're not doing that kind of stuff. So some of it's inadvertent. Now, here's the other thing, too, that we're really thinking. It's like, um, if this is like their color, their flag, in a sense, um, look back at the Nazi flag. What colors are they? I didn't consider that. I didn't, because I was, I told you where I was going with it. I, I just like to remake something. And now I'm glad that our colors are that. And I'm like, you know what, I'm going to stand on that, and we're not going to change it because we need to stand victorious and rebrand all that is evil for good. Plus, in a marketing perspective, it looks sharp, don't you think? Yeah. Now, this another aspect of this is uh, things that we, we're not supposed to go into, and we'll leave that to our government. But. They know we know. <laughs> let's just put it that way. It's not hard to figure this out. Okay, let's go on to more things. My name, Rose. That's not my first name. It's, uh, I guess, uh, like a sur surname, a uh, spiritual name. Uh, it has a lot of purposes in my life. It's a family name. Um, you know, actually, Rosa. I'm Italian, very Latin. A lot of Latin blood in me. So there's a lot of that. Sorry, I got a shift position. I'm getting uncomfortable. Um, so I didn't know it meant something to these people. We looked it up and uh, we're just getting comfortable. We were the ones in the accident in case you haven't noticed that. And uh, just tuning in, so we have to keep shifting out. Okay, I do better standing up than I do sitting down, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. Are you good too? Yeah. Okay, so let's go on about um, my name. Um, it means a lot, a lot to me. It's very symbolic, but I had no idea that this was their thing too. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, we don't know exactly what it means. Uh, we've heard some theories and, uh, you know, Theories are cool because it helps you develop and find the truth, but we, we don't exactly know. They just use it a lot. Yeah, they use it a lot, and even more so since I've been using it. So, interesting. Okay, my yellow dress. Uh, look on our website. I was raped in a yellow dress. I was wearing yellow and my grandfather raped me. I'm wearing yellow now. Obviously, it doesn't freak me out. Yellow is happy. I'm like over it. It's all good, people, really. But I do, I'm not making fun and laughing at if you were purposely avoiding yellow or even at the time avoiding the color red because you didn't want a chance, you know, hurting me. Um, I totally get it, beloveds and beautifuls, beautifuls and beloveds. Thank you. I'm not mocking that effort. I'm not mocking that gesture towards me. I appreciate it. I really do. Because I understand that symbolism can be very strong and it could harm somebody at a strange, uh, you know, third party, non direct way. So, uh, Yeah. Right, you said, keep saying that. <laughs> Obviously. Okay. Um, it says their symbol to be ceremonial. I don't know much more of that. I, yeah, I don't know either, but um, we may be getting closer to it. Uh, the answer, it would be really horrible if there was something to it. Mm -hmm. 
all I know is that they ran with it and, you know, trying to get under my skin in a sense, and I'm like, it's uh, not working. Um, okay, even my red hair. There's something that these people are enchanted with or something with red hair. I'm sorry for being so vague with that, but we're trying to figure out if it means a really good thing in their eyes or it's a mark, you know. Yeah, the meanings for that, it could be have something to do with uh, possibly like royalty or something like that. A lot of these people tend to assign meanings to a person's skin color, hair color, eye color. <clears throat> for the red hair, I guess they would see it as it's a rare color to have his hair, so they see it as more special or something. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that a lot of certain royalty people have had red hair. Queen Elizabeth. And people sometimes depict angels with red hair, too. So, there's yeah. some, they see some kind of meaning. And, uh, you know, all I can say is that the Northern Italians merged with the Sicilians in my family, and they made passionate love, and we have a bunch of redheads throughout time. <laughs> my mom had very, very dark skin and hair. My dad was very, very fair, like completely opposite. Beautiful, oh my God, beautiful people. Just beautiful, my parents. And uh, they made a strawberry. You know, I was their little strawberry. It's a little story I wrote too. It's really cute. So yeah, I don't know. I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> we have to do part two. Is it over? Almost. Oh, okay. So we're going to sign out. We're going to do part two, so stay tuned.